Alright folks, today I thought I'd cover the biggest problem of all most of the time in a congenital heart defect, uh, which is the hypoplastic left heart. This is the one that I always worry about an adult tech doing a study and having it be a hypoplastic left heart. Um, it's very, very important that you take a look at these images that I'm going to show and some of the drawings that I'm going to do because um, finding one of these is one of those life and death kind of situations. Um, if the PDA closes, the patent ductus closes, before you tell the doctor, that baby will go down real quick and crash and probably die. So it's very, very important when you see something like this that you immediately get the peds cardiologist involved. Now, I always say that anytime you see anything that looks really abnormal, you should immediately call the peds cardiologist to come up and help you with the echo. So this is one of those cases where if you do see something like this, then get a hold of them and have them come up. Now here's a picture of a hypoplastic left heart. Um, I guess the main thing I can show you right off the bat is that you'll notice some abnormalities that will jump out at you with your first view. Um, the one that's pretty obvious is the size of the left ventricle. You can see how this LV is small and uh, compared to the RV it's, it's really tiny. Most of the time, the mitral valve will be either absent or so stenosed that hardly any blood, if any blood, is flowing into it. Um, so the, the left ventricle is getting either tiny bits of blood or no blood at all. Um, most of the time, you'll see, if you look at this aorta coming off of the left ventricle, it's very small. And once it gets past the third vessel, it starts to open up. Um, there's a vessel connecting the PA with the aorta. That is, uh, they're not calling it a, they're calling it a ductus arteriosus, which is good because that's what it is. And you can see the size of this compared to, you know, um, the other vessels. That It's a very large uh, ductus. But a ductus that large can close pretty quickly. And you have to be ready because if it does close, you got big problems. So um, this is one of the looks of a hypoplastic left heart. I'll show you some more because there are different looks. Some of them have more of a thickening of the LV, and the LV chamber will be small. But it looks like there's almost an LV there with severe hypertrophy, but it's truly a hypoplastic left heart. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if my uh, um, images on these uh, slides here look a little bit uh, greenish and hazy, um, it's because my iPad is dying a slow and painful death. Um, so I'm sorry for that. I'm hoping to get a new iPad as soon as the general gives me permission. And anybody who's married knows who the general is. So... Um, Anyways, this is what I was talking about earlier. You can see that the left ventricle here is really, you know, it's it, it, the shape is preserved, but the entire chamber is all muscle. You know, or the entire area of the, the left ventricle is almost all muscle, and there's a tiny little chamber here. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of an aortic valve that actually functions. Uh, most of the time the aortic valve will be either non-existent or if it does open, it doesn't open properly. It's usually part of the, you know, the underdeveloped aorta, so you don't get great flow going through it. Um, occasionally you'll see just a little bit of flow going through and, and it's, you know, maybe so small that it's not enough to sustain the systemic uh, flow going through the heart. So um, you can see here again very small aorta, right? So that's not uh, of any help at all. Um, and uh, you need this ASD desperately. The bigger it is, the better it is. Because that is your only mixing point 
of LUD from the left atrium to the right atrium and out to the RV, you know, so you've got LUD going from the LA under the PA and through the ASD into the RV, out the PA, and it goes both to the lungs, to both lungs, and then also through the ductus, okay? Um, sometimes they call it a vessel because it, you know, it, it really is truly what is, it becomes the aorta, but it depends upon who's looking at the picture and making the decision. So anyhow, this is a significant problem. Watch for this right away. I think your first clue will be the size of the left ventricle and the le you know where the mitral valve is. Like I said, the mitral valve is usually what they call atretic. It's just not there or it's so stenosis it's not working. And then look for this small tiny aorta. The ascending aorta will be small and tiny, so look for that too. Okay, here's another one, just another picture of it. Now here you, you kind of see a smaller ASD. Whoops, sorry, forgot to change the pen. Uh, kind of a smaller ASD, so that's not good. Um, and the ductus here, very small. So this is a, a severe case. This is a case that needs to be addressed right away because there's probably very little blood going from here to here. Um, and it's definitely not going to be enough to sustain life. So the aorta is small too and you figure that all the blood going to the body is going through this little tiny ductus here. If that ductus closes, this baby becomes so cyanotic, so it becomes a blue baby, and the, you, know, you may not feel pulses in the legs. Um, I've seen these kids go downhill so quickly, it's sad. It's just really, really sad. When I started out doing echoes um, in the 1800s, well, it wasn't that long ago, but about 30 years ago, a baby born with a hypoplastic left heart um, most of the time had almost no chance of living unless they could get a transplant um, going, which is very rare in children. You know, it's hard to find a newborn who maybe has uh, severe brain problems that can donate a heart where the baby's going to die from the brain hemorrhage or something like that. Um, so it's rare. And then also the procedure... To do, to, to try to repair this, which was called a Norwood procedure, it's still used, but it's been modified quite a bit. Back then it wasn't um, very easy to do, and there was only a few surgeons who could do it well. And uh, I think the numbers were about, if the kid had surgery, about 50% of the children still died. So, not good numbers. Okay, um... Like I've said before, I think Mayo Clinic does the best job of explaining things to people. So I'll give an overview here, and I'm going to read it real quick. Hypoplastic left heart syndrome is a complex and rare heart defect presents or present at birth congenital. In hypoplastic left heart syndrome, the left side of the heart is critically underdeveloped. Okay. If your baby is born with hypoplastic left heart syndrome, the left side of the heart can't effectively pump blood to the body. So the right side of the heart must pump blood to the lungs and to the rest of the body. Medication to prevent closure of the ductus, which we talked about it, and I wanted to mention the medication. Um, we used to use prostaglandins. I think it's still the same thing, but between the right and the left side, so anyways, um, followed by either surgery or a heart transplant, it is necessary to treat hypoplastic left heart syndrome. With advances in care, the outlook for babies born in hy with hypoplastic left heart syndrome is better now than it was in the past. That's very true. So anyways, I wanted to put that up because I really like Mayo Clinic. Okay, I wanted to mention some of the symptoms. So babies born with hypoplastic left heart syndrome usually are seriously ill soon after birth. Hypoplastic left heart syndrome symptoms include grayish blue skin color, or called cyanosis, rapid difficult breathing, poor feeding, cold hands and feet, being unusually drowsy or inactive. In a baby with hypoplastic left heart syndrome, if the natural connections between the heart's left and right side, foramen ovale and ductus arteriosus, are allowed to close, he or she may go into shock and die. Signs of shock include, 
cool, clammy skin that may be pale or gray, a weak and rapid pulse, abnormal breathing that may be either slow or shallow or very rapid, dilated pupils, lackluster eyes that seem to stare. A baby who is in shock may be conscious or unconscious. If you suspect your baby is in shock, immediately call 911 or your local emergency number. Now, I want to just put the symptoms up and read them to you because very important, you know, every once in a blue moon something happens where a baby looks fairly well and, they, you know, maybe they think, man, the baby is not as active as it should be, but we'll send them home with the mother because, you know, now mothers only stay a day in the hospital. And all of a sudden, the patent ductus closes on the mother, and this baby will go into shock right away. And now you've got an emergency on your hands. And if you don't have a good ER doctor who suspects this or an echo tech who can run up there and immediately make a diagnosis and that they can open up the ductus quickly, the baby will die. Um, it's just sad. So hopefully it's picked up in the hospital. All right, this is a drawing from Texas Children's Hospital, which is also a fantastic center for pediatric cardiology. Um, some of the main centers are Arizona, um, I can't remember exactly what the hospital is called, Arizona Children's Hospital, I think. Um, and a few, you know, there's other centers around, you know, usually bigger hospitals, university hospitals will have great you know, peds cardiology departments um, with more than one peds cardiologist and maybe several techs. So I just threw that in there to help you out. Um, this is what you would call the most severe case of hypoplastic left heart. You can see that there's just nothing here. There's no left ventricle. The mitral valve is completely closed. Look how tiny this aorta is. And it goes into a vessel that really is a hybrid PDA that actually turns into the descending aorta. So the only flow that that body is getting is going up that way, really, because most likely there's an obstruction somewhere here in this aorta. So this is a really severe case of um, hypoplastic left heart. Okay, so here's one of the repairs that they use. There's usually a two or, I can't remember, it's a two or three stage repair for a, a hypoplastic left heart. And it's called a Norwood procedure, but there are procedures that are done beforehand, like a Glenn uh, shunt that's put in and several other things. I'll try to, I found some pictures, but I didn't find all of them, so I want to explain some of them too. And this is to help with flow. Now this would be where the aorta is small, but still patent. So what they do, is they make an incision in the small aorta here and they put in a patch where it's you know really small and not working and that patch is you know um, put in and and then uh, that's the first first step that they do in the sense of the operation usually and then they take the superior vena cava and they basically cut it and patch this part or sew it closed and then they sew the superior vena cava into the right PA so that allows extra flow going to the lungs they sew closed the connection to the pulmonary artery and they tie off the PDA because now the blood is getting the blood is being supplied by the superior vena cava and now the flow that's coming out of the right side of the heart is going to the left side of the body. So this is called a bidirectional cavopulmonary connection, which is a new term for me, but that's what it's called. So, Okay, um, this is stage one. I, I think I showed you stage two first. I'm sorry about that, but, you know, some days my brain doesn't work as well as it should. That's because I'm old. All you guys are young. So anyways, um, this would be um, the first stage, which is where they put in what's called a blaylock tausick shunt. Blaylock and Tausick were both physicians. They invented this shunt. It goes from one of the brachiocephalic vessels into the PA. And they're still doing the patch first, and then the patch here. 
and now you've got some blood going into the right PA um, that will help keep the baby alive and continue to shunt blood. But that's a small shunt, that's not a big shunt. That's why eventually they connect the superior vena cava into the right PA and then that will supply the PA with blood and uh, they remember they actually sew this off and then you get this inferior vena cava supplying blood to the entire body okay so it's very complex the surgery is very six eight hours sometimes for them to do these surgeries it's incredible um, and having a surgeon who really is good at it is you know it, it used to be a very rare thing. I'm sure that it's better now, but uh, this is a surgical procedure that's very, very difficult and requires quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of thing or quite a bit of talent. So, anyways, um, again, this is what the repair would look like first stage, and then I explained the second stage a little bit. Now, if I remember right, there might be a third stage where they actually have to enlarge the aorta a little bit more. The problem is, and this is the main problem with any time you turn an RV into basically a single ventricle, because what happens is now the RV has the work of pumping blood to the entire body and the lungs. So now you've got an RV that's meant to be at a pressure of about 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury and now it has to be around 100 to 120 millimeters of mercury to really give the child good blood pressure. Um, unfortunately that doesn't happen. Most of these children have low blood pressure because the RV just can't keep up. So what you end up worrying about mainly is RV failure. So if that RV starts to fail and it becomes too much for the RV to handle because the RV is not made structurally like the LV is. I mean it will increase in thickness and the muscle will get bigger but it's not made to really pump blood to the lungs it's, or to the body. It's made to pump blood to the lungs so it's used to being under a lower pressure. Now in this case it kind of has to adjust but over the years you know as the child gets older and older um, that RV will start to fail and then we're talking about a transplant. So then, you know, it's just a matter of everything out of here and start over with a transplant. And, uh, you know, if they make it to 16 or 18, then you can put a regular size heart in without a problem. If they don't make it that far, you're looking for a child. And uh, that's a hard thing to find usually, but sometimes it, you know, works out and they get a transplant and things work out pretty well. The problem is if they have... Um, um, RV pressure increase. When you uh, do the transplant, the lungs are used to having a higher pressure. And sometimes when they do the transplant, the RV has trouble keeping that pressure up. So you just hope that eventually the RV drops in pressure because it's only pumping to the lungs and the lungs settle down and the kid does well with the transplant. So anyhow, those are the main things. And here you can see how my iPad is failing. This is a picture of my granddaughter who is keeping me very busy and uh, runs me all over the place and loves to jump on me and punch me and kick me and all those other things. So, Papa has to take charge occasionally, but uh, she's a wonderful child and I love having her and the good thing. And I'm so happy because uh, there's so many families going through this, but my, my daughter, my granddaughter, was lucky enough to be born without any congenital heart defects so I'm very happy about that. If you have a child that's born with a congenital heart defect remember that if they're born these days the chances of survival are very high as compared to what it was like even 30 years ago when I started so be happy that you're at the time now. I'm sorry this went so long and but I wanted to show you my granddaughter because she's cute as hell so um, I want you to have a great day, and hopefully you'll take something out of this, and things will be good. Bye.